dropping that information in place so that we map the whole of Africa and we are doing so uh, in partnership with the government of uh, South Korea. Uh, we started with a, a, a sample of a few countries like Zambia, Mozambique, and Tanzania, but now we are going to cover the whole of Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. And to Ghana. Thank you. Just to um, address what he said, in Ghana as well, we are also trying to um, map out all the areas, develop a cadastral system that will be online to ensure that when we and we can get exploration investment coming in. And we have also noticed that one of the issues that companies have raised is in respect of our um, value added tax um, for exploration companies. And this, we have brought this to the attention of the government and we are holding engagements with the Ministry of Finance to ensure that we can take away these taxes to promote investment in exploration. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. To Burkina Faso. Thank you. Uh, coming to Burkina Faso, we have uh, made some effort in, uh, in attracting investment in uh, exploration. Because uh, in the Mining Act, we made some effort in ex exemption taxes during the exploration and construction period. So to allow the investor to come to, to invest. And then we have uh, set up the farm in the, during the production period to uh, reinforce the capacity of our National Geological Survey to build the capacity and to, to do is how uh, exploration and then yeah we also have some uh, a good mining cadastre which is now being uh, put in on, online so then the investor can have some information even they have uh, they, they are in, in a country. You mean you don't know you don't have to come to Burkina Faso before getting information about the geological information materials. You can Google it through our mining cadastre and then you can proceed to get the license. So we are we are busy on it, so I need uh, I think it's the best way. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Zimbabwe. Thank you, moderator. Uh, of late in Zimbabwe, we have really encountered the problems whereby exploration companies they come, and they, they don't declare exactly what they found at the ground. So we've come up with a system whereby our geosurvey department uh, was recapacitated to, to do extensive exploration in areas uh, where exploration has been done before. For example, in the northern part of Zimbabwe, more bureau exploited for over well, 30 years ago, and they said there was nothing. They say another company came after we were exploring, done extensive exploitation, we find another company to come and explore. And they found that there was a very large deposit of oil. I think they'll be starting to mine their area. So we are also uh, developing an online cadastral system so that whoever is out there will see what we have before coming. We have also advised operating companies to do further exploration on uh, their established uh, operations, uh, like uh, in the Great Lake, we have companies like Sandras and uh, Mimosa. They are doing further exploration to ascertain I mean, the, the, the size of the deposit they have for mine planning and the development. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, over to Sierra Leone. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we have problems with exploration because uh, one of the licenses that we give out is for exploration and this normally takes something like four years. One of the problems we have with that is that it's creating problems with communities where these mining companies operate. For instance, uh, the agri 
Amen. When you have an exploration license, you start to, you are not bound to do anything in so far as corporate social responsibility is concerned, although we encourage mining companies to pay respect to the people whose communities they are uh, mining in in so many different ways. Uh, one way we mean to get around that, like I've said, is by reviewing our Mines and Minerals Act. There is a first come, first after uh, clause in it. Uh, personally, I don't think that uh, that's right. What we want to move up to is competitive bidding, so that there's something out there you want to explore. It's not going to be first come, first up. As many people that are interested will come and we will do due diligence and we will uh, choose who we think is best insofar as our own interests are concerned. Another way we are trying to deal with this is by doing what uh, the uh, ambassador just said. Uh, we have got money from the uh, World Bank for our uh, uh, aeromagnetic mapping of our minerals. We think that uh, when we know what we have, and beyond that, we are looking to see if the mapping will include what we have and um, how much of we, we have and where we have that. And so that will help us in negotiating with um, people who come in with their dollars and want to exploit our mining resources. It has to be a win-win situation for all of us, and uh, that's the direction in which we are going at the moment. Thank you very much, and over to our host. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, a few lessons that prevent regarding the question you asked. First, when we started, it was solely the government doing preliminary exploration and, uh, and uh, prospecting. But then the, the big mining houses came in, for instance, DBS, Anglo-American, BP, and did explorations, had some findings. The law compels everybody to deposit their findings with the geological institute. But uh, we then later discovered that some of the, these big mining houses, when they see that the deposit is small, they, 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 they disregard it. Until we agreed with the junior mining houses that they come in, and they actually inherited some of these uh, discovered smaller deposits, and I think you are one of the beneficiaries. I was one of the discoverers. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, we now believe that exploration, expensive as it is, should not only be confined to those that have money. We believe that the, the junior mining houses should also partake in this. And uh, we are still grappling with the issue of how we can put together packages of how we can attract more to do a lot of more a lot more exploration and prospecting. There is however an emerging scenario which is making us have sleepless nights. I was talking about citizen empowerment and participation a, a few moments ago. We've seen a lot of our citizens having interest in exploration and, uh, and, and prospecting. But you, of course they do not have the, the resources. However, in their need to do what is required of them, they have uh, gone to countries in the north, Europe, the Americas, to, 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 to look for partners to, to start prospecting. And in the process, it has caused us a lot of consternation in that this has in turn led to a lot of speculative tendencies and in the process delay the whole process of prospecting and explore, exploration. 
It is something that we believe we will have to deal with and ensure that much as we like to empower our citizens and much as we would like to have foreigners coming in, we must have a middle ground where both parties will be able to, to have that win-win situation that uh, uh, Chanda was talking about. So these are some of the challenges that we have. But uh, for every challenge that there is, solutions are abound for as long as we apply our minds to how we find a better, a better solution to the problem. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. If I could just beg the audience's indulgence to give a one minute story uh, about the discovery, which I think is quite apposite. In 1969, the Bears discovered a very, very small kimberlite in the Indiarapa province of Botswana. Fast forward to the turn of this century with the advent of modern technology. Technology, of course, is a the second theme uh, of this conference. The kimberlite was seen to be much larger uh, and potentially economic. <coughs> Fast forward a few more years and following a junior mining approach, which is somewhat different as we know to a major mining approach, uh, that deposit is now called Kuroi Mine. Uh, it's a model diamond mine both in Botswana and for the world. And very importantly from a financial perspective too, it produced dividends for its shareholders in its second year. And to the original African Diamonds shareholders who developed the deposit, and I was the MD of African Diamonds, it gave it 25 times on their investment. So it just shows what can be done with modern technology and with different thinking uh, in terms of releasing uh, what I believe as well is there to be a phenomenal uh, resource potential on the African continent. I move on to my penultimate question. This is a slightly more philosophical one, so please, uh, if you could keep uh, to the three minutes, and, and you've all done so well so far, so thank you so much indeed. Uh, and I ask this question uh, because it comes out of the Joburg in Dava uh, of last week, where, as many of you might know, uh, South Africa released its mining charter, I think its fourth mining charter last week, and a very famous uh, offshore investment fund manager who puts millions, if not billions of dollars, into the mining industry said he couldn't get past page four because of its complexity. So in, in order, in, and I'm going to take that question uh, and try and phrase it in a way uh, which would be meaningful for the, uh, our panel and for the delegates. And the question is, how do you balance internal political demands with external competition for the investment dollar? Your Excellency, you've got the hardest question because you have the broadest church. <laughs> I think the best approach is in really dialogue. And also in that dialogue, I think in both sides you should have technical capacity. If there are no technical capacity, I think an element of uh, mistrust is going to, to arise. Uh, I'll give you a quick story uh, which arises from the area discussion. Two options. One, an African country was exploring for oil for several years using a private company and nothing came out. And the head of that country decided that he needed to uh, develop local capacity. So he sent out, to, he sent out uh, young men to go and the exploration, engineering, economics, and all the other, other issues. They came back and established the unit. Within five years, uh, that unit was operational and they discovered the oil. Another African country is advertising for oil exploration and later discovered that the companies we are using the exploration licenses to go and get the funding, which they use to invest in the other sectors. So the question of really having a technical competent people on both sides is very, very important, so that you discuss in detail and bring up evidence. When there's that evidence, there's real dialogue and mutual trust. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to Honourable Minister Thank you. I think that he made the critical point. The issue of trust is key because um, the resource-rich countries, the population needs to see that they are deriving some benefit from the resources. So when you see mining companies come into your country and um, take away your resources and develop their countries, and your country is not 
actually getting any gain from the mining that is taking place, then there is a huge issue. So to balance the political, um, the political position and the investor's position, trust is key. We both have to um, take actions to ensure that we are seeing the benefit to both sides. If the population is not seeing the benefit to the country, then there is, uh, there is a problem. That is why in Ghana we are now trying to build on our lessons from mining gold in our country. Um, mining gold, we have exported all our ore in the raw states without doing any refinery, without um, undertaking any activities in the downstream value chain. And therefore we are losing out. Now we have huge deposits of bauxite and we have learned from what we have done in the gold industry. And now we have instituted a bauxite authority to manage the bauxite resource to ensure that right from the beginning we are going to institute an integrated bauxite um, industry. So any investor who wants to come in to come and mine the bauxite is now, um, um, we are now going to obtain commitments from him regarding the downstream integrated bauxite activities. And I think when we are able to do this um, throughout all the mining activities, we we'll build that trust and there will be a win-win situation for both um, the country and the investors. Thank you. Thank you very much. Burkina uh, Faso. Thank you. So, uh, we face, if in Burkina Faso, we face to this problem in 2015 when we were revising our mining act. And then we, we had a discussion, national discussion, involving uh, NGO, local community, and government. So, yeah, it was very, very difficult to have uh, an agreement between the uh, different actors. So, that's why we, we propose to set uh, a fund to build the capacity of our National uh, Geological Survey, then he can explore and uh, give the result to the state, and then we can negotiate properly with the, the, the foreign company. So uh, another aspect is that we have set up uh, a national agency for formalizing uh, artisanal mines. So we deliver also some uh, license for artisanal mines. So to, uh, it was to, to, I mean, to build the national capacity in exploitation of gold. So we would like the national investor to be involved in mining exploitation. But we also made, made the balance between the bigger company with the national investor. So then we can have a win-win situation. But uh, now, yeah, I can see local community population. They, yeah, they, they are agree with the, the, the mining, the current mining act. But we still have some, uh, maybe some aspect to reinforce. That uh, we are busy on it, so we still discuss. It's not easy, but uh, we hope we we'll find a good solution. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe the most difficult challenge with the new government in Zimbabwe. How do you balance this? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Uh Of late, uh, we have had the problems in Zimbabwe when we discovered diamonds. A lot of companies came, some from the Chinese. What these guys did when they came, they just uh, mined diamonds, uh, displayed some people wasting the. Um, So the government will come with a share ownership trust led by companies who will displace people to do something in the community, like maybe building houses for the displaced community, schools, roads, and so forth, and the land rehabilitation. Uh, I think what's needed to be done now maybe is openness between the investor and the government. Everything has to be transparent so as to protect uh, 
the investment and also the spectre of uh, property. What we are doing in Zimbabwe, we are, like I indicated, we are coming up with policies in every mineral. So far we have done the lithium policy. Like I indicated, we are also uh, conducting other stakeholders for the diamond policy. Uh, what's uh, most important for for the, it's, it's for the community to benefit through beneficiation of minerals. Like one speaker has said that uh, Zambian copper is passing through Botswana on the way to markets in Europe. We need to improve on mineral beneficiation for the benefit of our communities. Uh, on the political point of view, uh, when the people do not benefit from their resources, then there will be problems, especially among us politicians. So it means there has to be a balance between the two, investor and the state. Uh, in my country, uh, we are putting control measures for all investors who come, so that before they invest, we speak to them about, uh, I mean, uh, investing back to the community. How much are they willing to, to invest back to the community? Thank you. Thank you very much. Sierra Leone? Yes. Um, uh, it's a real problem we have here, this internal politics versus the uh, almighty external dollar. Um, we've been, in, it's, a, it's a new government in Sierra Leone and we've been in office for only about six months now. Now one of the things I found out when I took over as minister was that we had uh, mining licenses scattered all over the place, to so, even up to so many people. We really did not know who truly owned these mining licenses, shadow figures. But what we did, what I did as minister was to take a look at what we had, who was meeting our, his or our own responsibility as a license holder. And, uh, we managed to cancel 40 of those licenses. And what that has done for us is that uh, we have been able to reduce the uh, number of, well, I won't call them illegal because somehow they got these licenses. But they were not doing what they were supposed to be doing. And amongst them, between them, they own something like 60, 70% of possible mining uh, areas. This has been reduced to less than 19% with the cancellation of these licenses. And what we intend to do is to be sure that we really know the face behind the license. Because what happens is that foreign investors go, especially with mining, uh, artisanal mining, because we don't give these to foreigners, we only give them to nationals. They go through nationals who acquire these licenses. Uh, and the, the investors in the background will exploit our mineral resources if and when they can. So for that, for now, we have uh, put a, a hold on that. We have even put a hold on the issuing of licenses because we want to know who is the face behind the dollar. It's a big problem, but we are, we, we, we are finding ways around it, and I think uh, it may take time, but we will be able to get to the bottom of it. Um, it's one source of corruption. We will have to say so, because uh, what happens is that uh, these people who get these licenses no money would not get them. And uh, because we have cancelled some of these licenses, uh, some people are making political capital of it. And uh, political temperature is not quite what it should be because of that. But again, with proper public education, we are slowly uh, getting on top of the situation. I think uh, we need to be able to know who is who, and who wants to do what with our minerals in Africa. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister.
Minister for Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I haven't had a, a look at the, the document you're talking about. <laughs> what did you say to us? The, it's the latest mining charter. The mining charter in RSA. But uh, from the sentiments expressed by the person who read it, I um, can only conclude that and this is a lesson we must learn as actors in the mining industry that uh, in our quest, at times in our quest to be innovative, we end up being sophisticated to the point where the product is not smart and in the human resource uh, adage, smart simply means simple, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound. Therefore, whatever that we do, we must be aiming for people to understand it. Very simple terms. And it must be something that is actionable, that can help us to achieve more within a short space of time. So, simplicity does not necessarily mean that you are not smart. You have to be smart to do things and achieve greater things. So, I hope as we do whatever we will be doing in our respective uh, mining houses and respective governments, we will we'll take cognizance of the fact that we need to continuously improve the way we do things and therefore innovate. But that does not mean make creating barriers for people to take action on things that would help us realize our dreams. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Very wise words, Honorable Minister. And my very final question, and I'm going to allow two minutes for this because I'm mindful of trying to catch up a, a bit of time here. And it's one of my favorite questions. It's something I have to do actually all the time for my company. Uh, and I think you gentlemen and ladies uh, may have to do it for your country and continent too. Consider a scenario where you have to pitch your country or your continent for a multi-million dollar exploration mining investment. You've got two minutes to pitch this to a potential investor who could put his money or her money anywhere else in the world. Your excellency. Not very easy, because uh, you can visualize the process, but uh, even the history of uh, the, uh, the, the nature of exploration in, in Africa, one out of them that we need your services. And uh, for us to be sure that uh, we are getting value for money, uh, you will be measured. We are going to have a local capacity to monitor every exploration activity that we are undertaking, and uh, we need it to be completed within a, 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 a defined time frame. If there are problems, come back to us and we shall facilitate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Short and sweet to the point. Ghana. I'm not going to ask the, uh, the audience to vote, by the way, so, <laughs> but you can mention this, this to the delegates afterwards. Ghana has engaged in mining for over a hundred years. It's a very stable economy, um, politically. Um, we believe in the rule of law. Um, your investments in the country will be protected. Um, our laws do not um, promote um, nationalization, and therefore your investments will be protected. Um, as long as you are willing to work ethically and sustainably, um, the Ghanaian government will partner with you to undertake your projects in the country and we expect that at the end of the day, the activities that you are undertaking in the country will benefit the people of Ghana, as well as um, you obtaining um, revenue from your investment. You are welcome to Ghana. Thank you very much. Great sales pitch. Thank you. Oh, you uh, sir? Yeah. It's not question. Okay, let's try. So, uh, I think Burkina Faso is a uh, new money country, we, we now have maybe uh, 15 years of money uh, exploitation, but we, the good thing 
countries that will benefit from the former countries, the, I mean the whole country, all my country. So we learn from them and we have now a, a good, suitable a mining for that. So uh, yeah, to secure the investment, we, we have made some effort in uh, getting, securing the investment. Uh, we have uh, one office which is composed of army to protect the investment. We have also a unique model of convention for the whole mine, uh, for the mining company. So uh, we have some also taxes in institution. So then, yeah, for me, you know, for social one, and for sure you can, can, you can invest. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Thank you, Mr. The first one I've told the investor is that Zimbabwe is open for business. Uh, Zimbabwe is a basket where Mother Nature has placed all jewelry. So, come and visit Zimbabwe. Your tenure is uh, well protected and secured. The security of the investment. We also started some uh, tax rebates equipment that will be coming for exploration. Uh, there is also 100% uh, shareholding <coughs> for all other minerals except diamonds and platinum. Yeah, 100%. Except diamonds. Diamonds. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. We lost all the negotiated uh, royalties. So, Come and visit Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is open for business. My new government is welcoming all investors, regardless of color or race. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I went to Sierra Leone. Yes, uh, we have come a long way since uh, the war years in Sierra Leone. We are investor friendly now, no blood diamonds. You can come and find out for yourselves. I want to say here that uh, the moderator is witness to what I am saying because he was doing business in Sierra Leone. He left because uh, he sold to somebody with more money. <laughs> come to us as long as you are ready to work with us and obey our laws. And, and do something for our mining communities and our mining people. Take care of them, we'll take care of you. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. And Honorable Ms. Malali. Thank you. I think I already did the pitch. <laughs> but as I would say, <laughs> we are free to do business with us, as we've always proved to Total that there's a country that is ready to do business with them. Sanctity of contracts, respect for property rights, the security, bringing in, taking out your money, as long as it's done ethically. Uh, a happy nation, a nation that is always welcoming. This, this are the things that we say we should experience, but we should also not just come to do mine. We must experience our culture and our wilderness. The best world, world heritage site in Africa is here in the Okavango Delta. The best parks are here in Botswana. Not zoos, parks. Where you, you will drive for hours and hours in a park and you will not see any human being except the animals that you have to see. And in turn, we expect you to give as much of your money here as possible to benefit the people of this country. And thank you. Thank you very much, indeed, Honorable Minister. Uh, and on that positive note, ladies and gentlemen, I think you, you've clearly heard 
Africa is open for business, and using that phrase from, from Star Trek, and I'm an unashamed Trekkie, uh, it is the undiscovered country, and as long as we come and do business in a fair and equitable way and in partnership with the government and in communities, I can only see this being a, a great success. So thank you very much indeed for your time, Honourable Ministers, Your Excellency, uh, and for you delegates for uh, participating in this session. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.